Luke chapter 10. And after these things, the Lord appointed other 70. So there's more than 12. There are 70 of them also. And sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. So 35 groups of men, 41 if you count the original 12, are going out before the land and they're going out to where Jesus is going to go. Like John the Baptist prepared the way of the people for the Lord, so are these disciples. You know what's going to happen before the Lord comes back? He's going to send Jewish disciples throughout the world, the 144,000, and they're not Jehovah Witnesses. They're Jesus Witnesses of God. And they're of each tribe except Ephraim and Dan. So history, it will repeat itself. And when you don't learn history, you don't learn the ways of God. Joshua sent spies into the land. Moses sent spies into the land. Sent them before where they were going to go. And they would report back to Jesus. Well, they're not interested in you, Lord. Or they're really excited about, well, oh, they're, yay, nay. But they prepared the way. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, and that is still today. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, did that verse say, Send ye the people into the harvest? Or did it say for you to pray for the Lord to send? You see, churches and Seminaries get all confused. We're going to send them when you, when you give us your money. We'll train you to send you out. And there's no prayer for sending for God sending them out. These guys never had any seminary training. And still they went into all the places of Israel. <coughs> you got to be careful how they use scripture. You can't go to a foreign land. Pray for God to send someone somewhere. I'm of Polish descent. I, I can't go to Poland. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't. Right now, I'm not. So I'm praying. There's a missionary in Poland. I'm supporting him. I'm praying for God to send people to Jewish people wherever they are in the world to hear the gospel of their Messiah, Jesus Christ. I'm probably, I probably won't know Hebrew. I probably won't learn the language. So send somebody, Lord to your people now before Jacob's trouble that they may believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You get reports back to, from missionary. This area is, there's, there's no churches in this area. Pray that the Lord will send somebody. Maybe he'll send you. Maybe he'll send somebody in your church. But don't you send them. You let the Lord do the sending. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Isn't that nice? Isn't that just nice of sweet Jesus? He's sending his people out into wolves. They must be prepared. He must know they're ready. Don't think these disciples are just dummies. He just said to them, I'm going to send you into the enemy. And now they've got learning to do. I guarantee you the Lord tarries in what street ministry I got left. There'll be people who come up to me I won't know how to answer. And there'll be people I do know how to answer. Carry neither purse. Ooh, look at that. Men carrying purses. You got to get America out of the Bible. In the Bible times, the men carry the purses. Nor script, nor shoes. And salute no man by the way. That's kind of cold. That's kind of... <clears throat> you got a purpose. You're going to live by faith. Go where I send you and don't stop. Too many Christians today, they stop by family. They stop by friends. They stop by the fishing hole. They stop by anything but go to the purpose that God's called them to go. 
They lay up money in the bank. Is there anything wrong with laying money in the bank? No. Still, you got a purpose of God to go your way. Go is the same command of Matthew 16. Go. Well, I can't because. And into whatsoever house ye enter, all right, you go into a house. First say, peace be to this house. Who, who is the author of true peace? Jesus. Jesus already said the world has peace, but man, it, it's limited. They'll take it away. But my peace, capital P, be to this house. <clears throat> and if the son of peace, Isaiah 57, 21, be there. That's interesting. This is a conditional cause if. You walk into a house, peace be to this house. And if that son of peace ain't there, but if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. You're going to go to houses. You, you got a door-to-door -door ministry? Christ has told you not every house is going to receive you. Some houses will receive you, but they won't get saved. They'll just be nice to you thinking that that would be good, godly works to salvation that, oh, I invited these people in. And if the peace ain't there of God, it leaves with you. <clears throat> in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give you. Well, that's kind of harsh. What if they give you food you don't like? eat it what if they give you weird things like bugs or reptile food eat it now there's no concern for Jewish law here because they're going to Jewish Jewish houses now if they do and have violated the law that's that's sorry we're out of here you have nothing to do with the Word of God you remember what Peter said no Lord I have not put any unclean thing to my mouth to my lips but as far as Jewish people are trying to do right, you don't need to worry about the Jewish law. They're going to give you things that are right and dedicated by God. So eat it. But if you're going to be a missionary, there's some weird foods out there that you have to eat. If you don't, And some customs are, if you don't eat it, you may not be able to witness. You may not be able to survive. Like, I'm a Christian. I don't. I won't drink beer and all that. Uh, if you go to Germany, and if you're going to drink the water and spend your life in the toilet, not the proper way, not the way the toilet was designed, you would do good to drink some beer and wine. Now, somebody's going to take that. Oh, look at. And I would have some soda pop. <laughs> Bottled, water. Bottled water, but some countries. The water ain't good. What are you going to do? So you guys know where you are. In some places, I've heard missionaries say, you know, the meat is in the marketplace and every fly enjoys itself on it. I've heard talking missionaries in their food like, oh boy, how do you do that? And then you hear the reports of missionaries, some of the things they eat over there and then they eat. Eating, drinking, such as they give you, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Look at that. These disciples are laboring. They are working. They deserve food and they deserve drink for their ministry. You don't starve your preacher out. You don't starve the evangelist. You don't starve the missionary. You support them. They are laboring in God. And a lot of church people are going to get to the judgment seat of Christ. No, as I said, they're saved. A lot of church people are going to get before the judgment seat of Christ. And they're going to lose rewards because their pastor starved. He drove the worst car in the group and picked up more people and drove all around town more than the people did. If that guy is doing what God has sent them to do by God, for God, the word of God, he ought to have the best in all the people. Too many preachers don't. Too many missionaries don't. 
Go not from house to house. First Corinthians 10, 27, Acts 2, 47. Stay where you're at. Let them take care of you. Don't go to... Somebody invites you for dinner on, on a Wednesday night. Say, I really appreciate it, but I'm staying at these people's house. They're taking care of me. You don't go have dinners anywhere else. It's, it's what it says. Abide in the house that's taking care of you. Now that may be a Jewish custom. I don't know why he would put that on. But maybe the Jewish, you know, look at that. He's eating over there. That, what's wrong with our food? I don't know. But the principle's there. And into what's, now they do in the book of Acts, they go to house to house breaking bread. And preaching and teaching. There's a change. And into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. That's an evangelist. All right, they put it down before you, eat it. They put down for you. You don't tell them what you want. I don't know if I could handle that life as an evangelist. There are certain foods that I don't like, and there are certain foods, man, they ruin my stomach. And I hear a lot of people like chili. Well, I'd starve to death. But if they set down chili and green stuff that you're supposed to eat, if I were to be evangelist, I'm to eat it. That's what the Bible says. And heal the sick. You know, it's all about eating, eating, eating. You know, that was the original sin. You know, the original sin was they ate something that God told them not to eat. Now God's telling them to eat certain things Adam failed here Eve failed God said do not eat that fruit they ate it now Jesus saying you better eat what they set before you don't you fail mark the word eat in its form in the Bible if you will realize how much eating appears in the Bible and then you'll notice another word that shows up a lot around the word eat bread Mark, eat, and bread. And you'll be amazed on how many times those two words show up together. I have no idea why. I, I just My Bible's marked and I see it. Heal the sick that are therein. Well, I can't do that. I can give you a bottle of aspirin for a headache. I can go out and get you cough medicine for, for a cold. I can't heal you. So I'm, I'm not a disciple. I am not an apostle. I can't do that. I'm not going to pretend I did that. And say unto him, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. I can't say that. Where is the kingdom of God that they're speaking? Here comes Jesus. I can't say that in the streets. So I'm in the church age. We're not looking for the kingdom of God. We're looking for glory. We're looking for New Jerusalem. Yes, we're looking for Jesus, not as king. We're looking for Jesus as savior, as groom. I do believe that Jesus is never the king of the church. I don't think the church has a king. It's come nigh unto you. He's coming. Remember he said, you're going to go before me early in this chapter. Well, guess what? I'm preaching the word of God. And I'm preparing the way Jesus will come into this town. If you'll receive him. So they're preaching the com coming Messiah as we're preaching the coming Savior. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way out into the streets of the same and say, Here's a street preacher. You find a city that will not receive you, step out in the streets. Even this very dust of your city, which cleaveth unto us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. That's kind of harsh, unlovable words of preaching. You make it so the whole city can hear your, your rebuke against it by God's authority of Jesus Christ. 
Now, when I moved down to Florida and left Norwich, I didn't believe such a thing because there were people that did receive it. I said, I, I made some kind of thing. saying, listen, we're leaving. We're going to Florida. I thank you for the years that you guys have given me here in Norwich. And may God bless the field that we leave. We're down here in Daytona Beach. And if we were to ever leave this area, I went, there are people that have received us. And there are people that haven't received us. But he's talking about, he's talking about an entire city that, like the pigs, were more important than Jesus in his own hometown, Nazareth. Get out of here. We don't want you. When you got cities like that, you don't stay. If you become in a city that does not want Jesus Christ at all, nobody does. The Bible says pick up and leave and curse that city in the streets on the way out. And we're going to come to those days in America if the Lord tarries. One of those places is the schools. They don't want God. There's official decoration that we don't want God. Your children don't belong there. You need to homeschool. And if you got too much business all that, I'm sorry, you stand before God in judgment. The schools that you send your children to do not want God. Even the very dust of, you, of your sea, which cleaveth unto us the shoes, their, their feet, we do wipe off against you. I've known preachers who've done that. I have done that. And it's not a good thing to do. And if there are young men out there who's ready this and you get all don't don't do this. You take it to someone who has done it, you take it to somebody who knows somebody has done it. Don't do this. You better make sure that everybody is against God when you don't even do this. Don't even put a condition to do it. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. Ezekiel 16, 48. America and the preachers speak about Sodom, 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 Sodom. America is worse than Sodom. Woe unto you, Chorazin. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, cities destroyed, gone, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Impossible? What about Nineveh? When Jonah ran into that city, saying, what was that, seven days, something like that, 30 days, God's going to overthrow this city in judgment. The king stepped off the throne and said, let's all repent, including the farm animals. And God looked upon that city and said, hey, I like that. You repented. I'm going to spare you. All this that Jesus is doing, raising the dead, healing, the leprosies, the lameness, the dumbness, the deafness. Jesus is saying, this would happen tired and tired would still be around. Tyre will stand in judgment against Israel of Jesus' time at the Great White Throne Judgment. They'll stand up and say, we were just miserable, rotten, dead dogs. And we would have listened more than what you guys who had the law, who had the priest, who had the word of God. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than you. Than for you. Look at that. At the great white judgment, there are different degrees of judgment. Some will get worse. Some will get lighter. Like hell, there are different degrees of hell and torment in hell. And thou Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall thrust down to hell. That's what the men of the Tower of Babel try to do. They try to get to heaven. Their pride is so high, it's in the sky. And God will throw you down to hell. Get off your high ladder. Get off your pride. He that heareth you, look at Jesus now taking this personally, heareth me. He that despises you, despises me. He that despises me, despises him that sent me, God. When you take the gospel, however you do it, I'm not going to say it's wrong. Door to door, street preaching, passing out gospel track, one on one, talking to somebody. Can you ever say you are Jesus Christ? 
a Christian. If you're witnessing, you can, because he said, he that heareth you, heareth me. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ when you carry the gospel. You go all in the world of the gospel. What they treat you is how they're treating Jesus. So when they come up and get in your face and cuss you out, they're not doing it to you. And when they come up and give you a bottle of water and give you a sack of peaches, that's not you. They're bringing it to Jesus. Those little girls we dealt with Saturday put a smile on Jesus' face. Not only did they come with pizza, they came with water. Then they came with glorification of God and his word. Jesus told Paul, he says, why persecute who? Me. Why? Who was Paul persecuting? Jesus? No, he's persecuting the Christians. And Jesus said, you're persecuting me. You better realize when you're doing what the Bible says, this is witnessing. This is getting the gospel out. When you, How they treat you is how they're treating Jesus. Remember, if they spit in your face, they spit it in Jesus. And they pull, if they pull your beard, they pull Jesus' beard. When they rejected Jesus, his own family rejected him. His own city rejected him. His own people rejected him. They gave him nails instead of glory. And the 70 returned again with joy. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Oh, Lord, look, we're so happy. Devil possession, God, exorcism, yay. And he said to him, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He didn't congratulate him, did he? Devils, all right, I've seen Satan fall at the crooked path. I've seen the fall of Satan. And you just talk about devils? That's it. I've seen the, the, the ringleader of the devils fall. Some people will get offended with Jesus. You mean you didn't pat me on the back? I didn't get an M&M? I didn't get a gummy bear? I didn't get a little paper hat? I didn't get a balloon? Jesus doesn't throw parties. He said, you know what? Okay, you're happy what you've done. Behold, I've given you, I've given unto you power to tread upon serpents. So some idiot's got a flag, don't tread on me. With a serpent on it. And scorpions, as found in Revelation. And over all the power of the enemy, Satan. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I've, you're happy the devils are, but listen, I've seen the king of the devils fall. I gave you the power. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice, not. Nah. Don't rejoice what, what the devils can do in, your, in my name, what you can do with those devils. That's not something to be happy about. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I'm not to rejoice that four people got saved last week by preaching. I'm to rejoice that my name is in glory. My name is settled down. And only because I'm saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is my responsibility, it is my privilege to carry the gospel to other people and help them out. And Jesus says, as far as those devils or exorcism, whatever, that's of no importance. Salvation, your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life is more important. And if you ever see videos or you ever see a movie or you ever see a church, we cast out devils and their pride in it. Jesus, just make sure your name's written in heaven. You know what the most important thing Jesus said to rejoice in ever? Your name's in the Book of Life. Because if your name is not in the book of life, you're going to hell. Plain and simple. If your name is in that book, you're going to be with Jesus forever and ever to be. There'll be no devils. There'll be no devil where you were going. 
When the rapture happens within a few uh, years, there will be years. Revelation 12, we're going to see as Christians, we're going to see Michael and his angels and God toss Satan out of, out of heaven forever and never return. And we don't go with them. Why? Because our name's written in the book. We will watch Satan and his devils and all those that reject Jesus Christ. We will watch them be cast in the lake of fire. Yet we will never be because our name's written in heaven. We will see new Jerusalem, the new earth, coming down out of heaven, out of God, prepared by God for the land. Why? Because our name's written in the land's book of life. We will forever to be eternity in that new Jerusalem, in the city, praising Jesus Christ, our Savior. Why? Because our name's written in the land's book of life. That's our praise. And what's all that name written in the Lamb's Book of Life all about? What Jesus did upon Calvary. What Jesus did in that tomb and coming out of that tomb resurrected. And being seated at the right hand of the Father right now. That's why our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Rejoice in that. It's all about Jesus, not devils. Get your mind off the devils and get your mind on Jesus. Because the only reason why our names are in that book is because of Jesus. And he's already told him before the death, burial, and resurrection that there's a book with names. Look at that. He hasn't died yet. That because your names are written. The 70 and the 12, their names are written. And that's a whole other story when you get in Judas. But Judas is not mentioned here. He's talking about the 70, the other 70. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. 1 Corinthians 1 19, Matthew 11 25 to 27. Lord God, I am just so thankful for what you've given me, and thank you for these men. And there are some that don't understand. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. You don't know God without Jesus. You don't know Jesus without God. So don't tell me if you can't worship Jesus as God. That you know the Father Jehovah. and Don't tell me that you can have honor with God and have soul babies. And don't realize that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who is God. Don't tell me that you can have your glorified kingdom. And honor the mother of Jesus more than God who is Jesus. And then turn around and say Father, Father, Father in your prayer. You don't know who the Father is. <coughs> If you don't know who Jesus is. <clears throat> and he turned him unto his disciples. And said privately. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. So the disciples had more vision than the nation. Because obedience and of faith. And even I, I, I'm pointing to myself and giving the illustration. When I when I preach at the farmers market, I look at people and say, "Why don't you get it? Why are you not listening?" And I gotta remember that because I've already had faith and belief in God and believe what He told me to believe in Jesus Christ. They haven't, and they're not gonna get nothing until they come to Christ. And that moment, when you whatever ministry you're doing, you gotta realize, thank God that you do have Jesus, and your eyes are not blind. Give this Bible to I don't know what age, a grade twelve year olds are in, in school. But give this Bible to whatever grade twelve year olds are in school, entire class, and all the twelve year all the twelve year olds. And have them read from Genesis to Revelation. Some knowing God, some not knowing God. And, and then December 31st, what are you going to get? You're going to get some people are going to read this Bible. They're going, wow, you know, 
it's amazing. It's a wonderful book. Oh, praise God. They're going to get some people, what? Uh, yeah, oh, so depend on their growth in the Lord. And you're going to get some people who are going to say, it's just a book. It's stupid. It's boring. A bunch of animals in the ship. This guy walking around him. You know, who cares? Why? Why the vast, from not even believing the Bible, to, wow, this book is just wonderful. It's your attitude to Jesus Christ. You can be a Bible believing, born again Christian. Well, how come I don't know more than that guy who's a Christian Bible? -like? What are you doing for Jesus? Are you witnessing? Well, no. Then you're not going to get more. You're not going to get excited when you read about Jesus on the street and say, Hey, that's happened to me. When somebody gets in your face and cusses you out, say, Hey, they did that to Jesus. And when you get little girls come up and they praise and thank you for what you do. Little children came to Jesus. Thank God. We ain't done yet. It ain't over yet. There are still people who love Jesus. There's still a mother who's training her daughters right. Praise God. Amen. Put them in my prayer book in my in my Bibles. Every time I read that, I read about that mother and those two daughters. There's still hope. Where did I get that from reading the Bible? You knew sees and uh, I don't know Timothy's mother's or the grandmother's name. Took care of a little boy named Timothy. Amen. I just saw a mother take care of two daughters to raise them right. That there's somebody who's doing what the Bible says. Go help. And I can come out of that Saturday night after I am rejoicing. I go to church rejoicing. And my family and I, we can have people come up and cuss us out and still rejoice and say, you know what? That happened in the Bible. And you go tell people in church, they look at you, that doggy looking in the doggy in the window, kind of, because you don't know. The Bible's alive. It's like that, it's like the little six-year-old trying to figure out, who's the guy turning the light on and off in the refrigerator? Keep on opening the door. I got that in my Bible. I've read this Bible since this one. Let's see, let me find here real quick. I read this Bible, and I'm not bragging. Since 2001, every year, and every time I go through this, I find something new. This book is alive because it's alive in my life. I'm living it. I'm trying to live it. I, for I tell you that many prophets, John 8, 56, and kings, have desired to see those things which you see. David. Think about David. See those things you see. You know what they wanted to see? You know what David wanted to see? He wanted to see Jesus. And you know what? He's talking to his disciples. 32 AD. That's what the date here. You men. They're watching him. They're looking at him. They're feeling him. They're touching him. They're living with him. You know, you men. David wanted to be with you right now. David would love to be here with you right now. Samuel would love to be here right now. Nathan would love to be here right now. Solomon for a while, until he got married, would want to be here. Abraham. It says that Abraham wanted to see that day. Have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. When did David ever see Jesus? He didn't. And to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. You know, we carry more than what the apostles carry today. Do you realize? Paul never had 66 books. He, he only had the books that he wrote. And from the chronology order, the, of the book, there wasn't many books that he could have gotten hold of that were written even during his time. He didn't have the book of Revelation. We hold more in our hands than the apostles did. And we do less with what we have. 
and behold, doom, 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 doom. And every, you know, movies, all that, they got, they got music. You wish you had that kind of music. Because we had this uplifting. Great. Devils are cast out. Praise your name is in the book of life. And behold, a certain Lord stood up and tempting him. Somebody's always going to ruin your day. I mean, let, okay, the disciples are happy, aren't they? They have a good cause. They're doing the work for Jesus, right? They're happy, isn't it? Okay, let's let's leave them happy. And Jesus did rebuke the happiness, but he said, your names are written in heaven. And listen, you're seeing things that kings David never saw. They're happy, aren't they? They're rejoicing. They're with Jesus. I've never seen Jesus. And I rejoice doing the ministry that he's given me. And then there arose a lawyer that tempted him. The wet sponge. The wet rag. Banging your toe against the table in the middle of the night. The bad news. The car breaking down. The headache. Tempting him. Saying, Master, they don't, that don't mean it. There'll be people out there that say, Jesus, my Jesus, sweet Jesus. I've learned this from the very beginning of my ministry. People come to you with the name of Jesus, and they don't mean it. And Paul has told us there's another Jesus. Master, what shall I do and inherit eternal life? It's not a true question. Because he's tempting him. He wants to catch him in the law. You know how long that law was of doing things? All the things you had to do to fulfill. I couldn't do that. He said unto him, what is written in the law? <laughs> he caught him. How readest thou? He's a lawyer. He's supposed to read it. He's supposed to understand. What do you read? The answer to this say, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, <coughs> and thy neighbor as thyself. Romans 13, 9. Now the Lord thy God, you run that to Matthew 22, 34 to 40, and Mark 12, 28 to 34. As references. And Jesus, he said unto them, him, thou hast answered right. Love God with everything. Love your neighbor as thyself. This do. And thou shalt live. Leviticus 18.5, Nehemiah 9.29. There's nothing in here that just said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, did he? He told this lawyer, your works will save you. Ephesians tells us, not of works least any man boast. You see the difference in dispensation? Christ has not died yet. Don't go running to this verse for salvation. Now, Jesus said, you said right. This is the way of salvation. This is how to get the land of Israel. You said perfect. Guy has a problem. He has a severe problem with what he just said. What he just said, he didn't believe. You'll meet those people on the street. Because look what he does now. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? See, I don't want to worship man. I don't want to take care of man. I want to love me. I want to love God, and I want to love me. Forget my neighbor. Who's my neighbor? You don't mean Samaritans. Well, he must have, because that's what Jesus uses next. Why would Jesus mention Samaritan in the next part if this wasn't the lawyer's trouble? Maybe this lawyer, now I'm going to read into it, take it in the garbage can, you throw it into hell, I don't, if I'm wrong. But Jesus uses the Samaritan as an example to this guy. Maybe this guy fought against Samaritans. I don't know. But he willing to just justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And the question he's asking, you mean everybody? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man. So this is not a parable. My Bible heading says parables of a good Samaritan. No, there's a certain man. That leaves out it's not a parable if it's a certain man. This, what we're going to read, happened. Like the man that was rich and died and went in hell. 
That happened. Lazarus went into Abraham's bosom. That happened. Jesus is telling you a story that happened. See, Jesus don't need to make up stories. He already knows human life. Went down to Jerusalem to Jericho, a cursed city, and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. So there are thieves that run around Jerusalem. There are thieves that run around Israel and all that. Paul and his company had to deal with thieves. Mary and Joseph, when they traveled, had to deal with thieves. And by chance, there came down a certain priest, Levite, the church, that, that way. And when he saw him, for he passed by on the other side, walked around him. You can take care of him. And likewise a Levite. Not all Levites are priests, but all priests are Levites. This is the lower class of the priests. He's still in the family, but he's not a priest. When he was at that place, came and looked on him. Alright, so the priest saw him and went around him. The Levite, he went to him, looked on him, and passed by on the other side. At least he went and looked. Now this we the church in 31, if you want to apply it today, this would be a family, certain family. But a certain, certain, God knows who he is, we don't, Samaritan, John 4, 9. As he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, This is what the priest and the Levite did not have. Had compassion on him. It's a heart condition. And went to him. Bound up his wounds. Pouring in oil and wine. By the way, the Samaritans were the despised of the Jews. And sent him on his own beast. And brought him to the inn. And took care of him. There was room in the inn for this guy. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. And gave it to the host of the inn, and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Listen, take care of that guy. If there's a bill, I'll be back. Probably knew each other. I'll be back. You let me know, and I'll pay the debt. This is a man that's rejected of Israel. By people who are set for Israel by God. The church, I mean, the priest and the Levite were set by God and rejected him. Now, of these three, thinkest thou, the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. And he said, He that showed him mercy, he didn't even say Samaritan, get that. He wouldn't even say the name. He's just a pronoun, he. Them people. He's prejudiced. That's why I say that. I think this this lawyer was against Samaritans. Why Jesus used this? He can't even say Samaritan. It's a big filthy word in his mouth. Then Jesus said unto him, "Go and do thou likewise." You mean you want me to do as that Samaritan? Ew. Not me. I'm a whole full-blooded Abraham Jew unlike those half-breeds now it came to pass as they went that he entered to a certain village so see that certain's important and Luke points out the certains and a certain woman named Martha received him into into her house she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. Now this has been preached over and over. So I can just read through it. But Martha was cumbered. Much care. Much concern. About much serving. And came to him Jesus and said. Lord. Dost thou not care that my sister. Has left me to serve alone. I'm doing all the dishes. I'm doing all the baking. I'm doing all. She's just sitting there listening to you Jesus. Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, 
Thou art careful in trouble, run that back to cumber. Jesus told you what it meant. About many things. The casserole, the dishes, the stain on the floor, the chickens running through the house, or whatever it takes to cook. Listen, that's all important. Okay? It is. It's very important. Housework is very hard. It's a job. It's a labor. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Listen, when the Bible is being read, the Bible is being studied, when the Bible is important, it's put the household stuff away. Give attention to Jesus. There's a time for the word and there's a time for cooking. 